Aoife, this sort of concrete levy it's been called. Mm -hmm. It was mooted last year, wasn't it? And then it appears to have been abandoned and brought back now. Why? There was some chat about it, but it never really reached official level as far as I can see. Um, the case for it was basically made by Dave Regger and the minister beside me that, you know, the money for the mica uh, affected homes has to come from somewhere. And what Leo Varadkar and Pascal Donahue said is that people want certainty when it comes to the fiscal decisions and they want to be able to tell the people this is where the money is coming from and it has to come from somewhere. The other point that they would make is that the MICA families all along the West cannot wait any longer um, for their redress because they are living in very unsafe conditions. However, I think the most interesting thing about this is the MICA families are also not happy about this. They feel, feel like a concrete levy takes accountability away from those who provided the concrete blocks. You know, I was speaking to one person who said what they want is new regulations, you know, tighter regulations. They want to see um, something that would basically say to them that this will not happen to other families, it will not happen again. We'd heard in the housing committee as recently as June, I believe, that they said that there was industry reports that regulatory breaches were still ongoing. This is not full of them full of confidence. So what they're doing is they're adding the to the cost of the price of a house, which is already out of reach for a lot of people. And also they're not fixing the main problem, which is the quarries and whoever else that was involved in providing these defective blocks, what is to stop it happening again? So Sean Fleming, you're letting those who are responsible away scot-free and you're making a taxpayer who had nothing to do with this pay. Yeah, you're right. The taxpayer is being asked to pay about €3 billion, Euro, which is probably, for every house in Ireland, 1500 to pay for this particular micro problem and the problems we may have with some of the apartments in Dublin. I have a and very, the concrete levy on top of and, that. And I think very clearly the industry um, that was at the centre of this must be levied to some extent to make a contribution okay. to the Irish taxpayer for the three billion that the Irish taxpayer has been asked to pay. And, and you believe asked... that contribution is through this concrete levy on new houses, and yet you have the ESRA coming out on Friday saying, no, no, this will ultimately be shouldered by the people who are buying the houses. Well, the taxpayer, again. And the, the levy uh, should be levied on the construction industry, and through the construction industry, that's working its way into the con concrete blocks. And I think it's right that the industry that was involved in this uh, be involved in making a contribution um, to the cost of MICA. And I think if so we were to just to be know, clear, if we you think the doing... concrete industry are going to absorb this cost no, no, and not pass it on to the it, consumer? It will be passed on, but I think people of Ireland would not like to see the government handing out three billion of Irish taxpayers' money and not saying to the construction industry who are involved in building the houses, yeah, you should get off scot-free. There must be some source of income from the industry to make a small but contribution. Sorry, sorry, sorry Sean Fleming, you've just, yeah. you've just said you think that people watching at home this evening yeah. will want to see the Construction Industry Federation pay yeah. for this, but this will be passed on to the consumer. I don't understand. Well, if there, there, will, there will be a levy, and I think that's clear. And if people think there can be a levy on the <coughs> construction industry in relation to this, that it won't be passed on. I'd love to know how that can work. So it will be passed on? Well, I, if, if somebody can show me how it won't be passed on, I'd love to hear it. So the construction industry isn't paying? No, they are paying. They're not. You're saying they're passing it on to the well, consumer. The, the, yes, but the, the industry, the house building industry is the industry that causes this problem and the cost has to fall somewhere. If you're arguing that the taxpayer should pay every bill for everything without going seeking any redress, no, no, I'm there needs to be some redress. And it, it, do you agree there should be some redress? Because if you, Yeah, but you're, you're, just, just to be clear, to be you're redress. saying... No, there no, what you're saying redress. is... The Construction Industry Federation should pay for this. I never this. mentioned the Federation. But the construction, the construction industry, industry, sorry, not the Federation, Tom. The construction industry should pay for this. Yeah. But I accept it to be passed on to the consumer. There, so needs, the to, the, there needs to be redress paid um, through the construction industry, full stop. Michael. Yeah, I think the first thing that needs to be corrected is, um, Sean said that those building houses or whatever, it'll be 1,500. It's probably, I think Tom will back this up, um, those young people that are going to build in houses will be about 3,000 extra. 
the farmer that's built in a slashed shed where you use an awful lot of extra concrete is going to probably pay four or five thousand. Sean said 1,500 in every house. That's not the way this is going to pan out. This is going to be youngsters that's trying to get onto the housing ladder or farmers that's trying to improve their farms. On top of that, well, one thing we haven't thought of is that the government do a lot of contracts around the country. So is the government going to tax the government going to go back again to the government? This doesn't make sense. On top of that, and I think we need to go back a few years, that when we had the bank bailout, the, the Department of Finance stated very clearly we wouldn't put on an extra levy because it was actually affecting the ordinary people for what the bank's done. And that was a large figure, I think something like 65 billion. But now we're talking about 3 billion, but we are going to throw it on top of the people that's looking to get on the housing ladder or that's trying to buy a house, which is very unfair. Do you believe in the principle, though, that somehow the construction industry the first, should pay the first, for this? The first principle I believe in is that the people that put out a faulty prod product should be paying through insurance. That's the first thing I believe in. Not the ordinary people around the country that is now going to be saddled with this debt. And just to be clear, Tom, the construction industry is not going to absorb this, are they? Well, they can't afford to absorb it, and that wouldn't be what would normally happen. Like already this year, because of... Uh, energy crisis and so on, uh, the price of concrete and cement has gone up by almost 30%. And that's been, you know, the latest one. A notice comes out from the, the small number of cement manufacturers to say cement is going up by 10%. And then immediately the block manufacturers and the, the ready mix and the precast people will send out to their customers saying, as of the 1st of September, our concrete. So that that's, doesn't happen. So but you say this I, is going to push up the price? of a house, of never course. mind all the other buildings. Absolutely, there's no question about it. And I mean, you mentioned Alan Barrett and the ESRI at the very outset. He said if there was an iota of basic economic analysis done on this particular levy, it would be proven that it's not going to work in the way that it was intended. And just to take Sean up on the issue, like when you said the industry, uh, we used to share a constituency and I still yeah. live down in a constituency, yeah. but it's the boot concrete and it's the Lucknan concrete yeah. and it's the Benner concrete. Individual companies, family companies that have never broken a law are fully compliant and doing a very good job. And they're going to have to collect the levy on behalf of the government. And the only way they can do it is pass it on to the farmer and the house builder. And so who, who should pay then, Tom, if there is a defect in a house, be it mica or pyrite or a problem with the fire regulations? Who's responsible? Who pays? Well, in the ideal situation, and currently, the person who caused the problem would pay. Great. But in that situation, first of all, we didn't have the regulation, but certainly it was quite outrageous. A particular, one particular firm, to a very large extent, put out a massive volume of defective blocks that caused all of this problem. And one of the main reasons that there were so many of them put out, they were so cheap. Because nobody that was doing but a proper job But you're saying there was no regulation. And what you're saying, Aoife, is the regulation still isn't there. Yeah, and if the building regulations were not good enough, then the buck stops with the government. It is the government's fault if the building regulations weren't tight enough. And it's not, as um, he said, it's not fair on the people now producing concrete blocks that have no defects and have never done this. They will now be levied for that. This is what the families affected by Mike and Pie Rider calling for. It's not a levy that they want, because remember, they're going to have to put money to rebuild their houses. So it's also putting the cost up for those people, because they're going to have to buy blocks when they have to uh, yeah. rebuild their houses. Uh, Sean, it seems nonsensical. You have three people here all saying, yeah. two who, you've been a builder, Michael Fitzmaurice, you're obviously here from the Construction Industry Federation, saying this can't be absorbed by our members, and it will be passed on to ordinary people. So last week in the budget, you had your help to buy scheme recognition yes. that people could not afford to buy houses in Ireland. You're giving the money to help them to buy these houses. And at the same time, you're introducing this levy that's going to put up the price of those houses. Okay. Explain and, that uh, to me, because the, the, I think it's pretty the, nonsensical. The argument boils down very simply, and should the industry that was involved in this make some contribution uh, to the cost of resolving this? I think the answer to that is yes. I do believe if this was um, um, in the insurance industry, or any other industry, the industry involved should be asked to make a contribution. How it's worked out, the details of the finance bill will have the exact details so, of that in the next two weeks, so, which I can't give tonight yeah. because it's still being worked on. But so just to be clear, do you no, feel that there, there is a levy or there is a way of putting a charge 
on the construction industry that will ensure it's not passed on to those buying houses? Well, can you guarantee uh, that? Nobody can guarantee how uh, any company will pass on its costs, right? Nobody. So if you're asking me to give a guarantee to any insurance, nobody can do that. But I think the essence here is, if the Irish taxpayer is putting up €1,500 Euro for every house in Ireland to pay for this €3 billion, I think it's not unreasonable that the industry at the centre of it should be asked to make a contribution. Do you accept what Tom was saying there, that this is actually just a failure of regulation? Well, and the failure of regulation no, the no, stops the No, no, sorry, the that, that, that's the failure of the, the, the suppliers that caused the problem. The government didn't build a house. You might say there wasn't adequate regulation, but who made the mistake at the beginning? It was members of the construction industry. And I think no, some, ele that. some element... But okay, some element, just back in there. Well, there were suppliers in yeah, the industry. Well, the, well just I'm not saying clarity, members. the CIF don't represent the quarries okay. or the, yeah. the, the concrete manufacturers. Second of all, can, can I just come in here? But, but there were defective blocks produced. We... We, we, we assume that when we buy a product, or my members, when they buy a product that is fit for purpose, so the bulk of the blocks in the country were fit for purpose. But, you know, while this is a, a very significant problem in, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a particular area of the country... And it's a very significant an amount of money. We're talking maybe 3.6 billion is the price they're putting on this micro redress scheme. Absolutely. Record. So but, how, how, does the, the government notion, not have a right to try and recoup some of that for tax? Of course. But the difficulty is that we didn't have the regulation. And clearly, this company got away with, with selling... Uh, uh, substandard material and selling it cheaply. And so the government then buy. shouldn't punish the rest of the industry. Is well, look at it's society that are going to have to pay for it. The construction industry will be part of the solution and so on. But the notion. How is a, the construction industry part of the solution if you're saying. Well, we, not pay, our, we pay our taxes this. and very substantial taxes. And the notion that the industry isn't paying, like the, the government are giving a help to buy scheme, which is a, to a maximum of 30,000. Yeah. Every single house that's built pays 13.5% fat which is a minimum of 36,000. That's going into this sector immediately before they pay anything out. So the, the industry is paying its fair share already, like every other taxpayer. So we will contribute through society. But the notion that you can just target compliant, uh, honest-to-goodness family builders around the country, they will pass it on, and it's the unfortunate uh, well, first-time buyer that will have to pay for it. It's not the builders who, who are being targeted, it's the homeowners that will rent. And they're Michael, already under massive pressure. What's the alternative here? Well, first of all, I think if you do look at when you're building a house, um, I think something like 30, 40 percent between the wages you give out that goes back in tax, between all the, the materials that goes back, 30 to 40 percent goes back to the exchequer and taxes. So there is a cash cow coming into them already. I'm I believe that we should be going hard on the companies that sold these defective materials. But here, like, it's a fairly simple um, system to bring into place, and it was never done by be it councils or whoever should do it, um, that when you're opening a quarry or when you're making blocks, that is tested. When you get concrete, you, and that's you, you not can done send the, the concrete away for analysis and be tested. And it's a fairly simple thing to be done. And on a lot of large buildings, I think Tom and I right in saying, you, you take the cube of concrete and you go away and you get it tested. Absolutely. And, and all this should have been done and it should be regulated, but it wasn't. But now the ordinary Joe soap, that's be it building a slag tank, putting up a bit of a shed, or building a house, our first house in life, is 3,000 more because of it. Um, Sean, this levy, 80 million. If it goes ahead, it's expected to um, generate. That is a drop in the ocean, isn't it? If the overall cost is 3.6 billion, this micro redress scheme. How long is this levy going to be in place? I don't have an answer to that, and that'll be in the finance bill. But what, as you said, is it's a relatively small contribution to the 3 billion. And well, I it believe. It depends how long it's in place for. Yeah, it does. And it'll be a percent of the overall cost, but a small percent ultimately. And it is right that there be, should, should be some small contribution from the industry. So just to be clear tonight, yeah. this government, <clears throat> as it stands, even though you're saying the cost will be passed on... I didn't say to, that, you did, but it's kind of obvious it will, it will be happen. Passed it's on. Obvious, obvious it will happen. This government isn't for turning on this issue. What I'm saying is, I think the, the fairest thing to do is for the Irish taxpayer to pick up the vast cost of this but I think the sector itself should also be asked to contribute. Aoife, where's this going to end up? I feel like we're talking round and round in circles here. We're saying that the industry should contribute, but also then the then it's going to be passed on the, the home buyer. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Um, I think it is deeply unpopular. We've heard this from Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael backbenchers that they're not happy about this. 
I spoke to cabinet ministers last week, this week and last week, and they said that there was, you know, a kind of uneasiness about it, that the, when the finance bill came out, it mightn't be as blunt as an instrument as we're kind of seeing at the moment. But there's no real, I heard from one Fianna Fáil minister, it might change, and then another Fianna Gael saying it wouldn't. So I think it is still um, all they play for. It Optics-wise, it doesn't look great, but... In terms of like the vast kind of the big picture, I don't think this is something that's going to pull down the government.